I don't know if I have a lot of faith in IG. I feel like last year, all of last year, I kept saying, no, IG's going to win. They're going to go to Division One. They're going to be great. And every time, I kept getting fooled. So I'm going to listen to you. I'll take E home. I feel like that kind of works, um, you know, in terms of who I think is going to do something uh, impressive here. But I'm not too sure. There's a lot of question marks with these two teams, right? Like, E home is a completely overhauled roster. So... I'm, I'm, I'm ready to learn about some of these players. I'm ready to learn about the chemistry that's going on there. I mean, what better way to work it than to have uh, Death Prophet Tusk, very uh, typical China draft there with the DK mid last pick. When in doubt, DK mid. DK Dragonite, yeah, big Dragonite. Yeah. It always seems like a pick that is like, ah, you need something, you need reliable stun, you need the... I don't think they needed extra tower damage here, but having Dragonite, Death Prophet, and the Raid King with the Deso, like, that's going to be a lot of tower damage. I look at on the side of IG, they don't have that. Like, panel did mention some of the downsides of having Rubik plus Lich. These two heroes don't ra rotate as good as you would rotate with a Tusk or even Disruptor. It's very difficult to execute, and they need to heavily commit to actually get a kill on some of these uh, beefy boys like Raid King and Dragonite. They also got counterpicked to one extent where they open up with a Doom and Rubik, and it's an old-school counter. I feel like we've seen some of the drafts some counters from a couple of years ago. A little bit of uh, Who Do You Doom? I love that game show, though. Who Do You Doom for 500? That's really the, the question. Whether or not we see an answer is uh, up to the team with the Duke. I can rename myself to Duminic uh, for that particular show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it'll work. What is that, just adding one more O? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that works, for sure. Usually the top lane, like the Tusk plus Dead Prophet lane, you want to pair up Dead Prophet with something that has a stun, potentially a save. It's one of the best laning partners you can ask for, because you do have a block, uh, you don't need to get the tag team in this lane, it's more about getting the snowball, uh, spirit siphons. Once they get to level 3, I think this lane gets very difficult for IG to play. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. This is a, a lane that really was pretty typical last year, all of last year in China. Everybody was playing it. You were seeing it from LGD all the way over to CDC when they still had a roster and everything like that. It just, it, it feels very comfortable, right? Like, like you said, you get a very early power spike where you can be very aggressive and QIQX is going to have to be pretty careful in this lane. His positioning is going to be really important. Otherwise, he's going to be feeding away kills to Zhao Yu and Salad and Salad, he's an aggressive player. He reminds me of Bobica, especially during his earlier days with Newbie, so oh. his play style has always uh, been pretty much the same. Something about position four players and cool nicknames in China. Bobica, Baboka, and now Salad. And now we see the snowball save coming out. Yeah, they're going after Emo, just trying to keep Zhao Yu alive. A little bit of damage coming out from QIQX, but nothing that's really going to get a kill on either side of the moment. And Salad doing what you just said. A save, maybe a stun, why not both? The thing about this lane from Ehome's perspective is you want to stabilize the lane, you want to survive the early aggression coming out from Lich, because Lich level 1 is one of the most annoying heroes. He still has three mangoes to work with, but really low on mana, so surviving this first couple of minutes without being able to receive any losses in this lane is going to be really good. Looking at the CS on the mid lane, Knight on Dragonite, he does have two points uh, in Dragon Blood and uh, sitting at 11 CS. Like this hero right now is unkillable. What he has in a quick fight is going to be a Falcon Blade going into Power Treads. So tanking up uh, early on before it was a Soul Ring. That Soul Ring a bit too expensive right now. So for the cost, like what it gives, it's just, uh, you know, it was OP before it got nerfed. Those boots coming in for, for Emo. Gets clipped on. We see some boots. Now we see QIQX in a lot of trouble. Those shards were well placed, but able to get under the tower and sneak away from uh, both Salad and Zhao Yu. Making me really hungry. Salad. It's a cool nickname. Yeah. I don't know why. When you said Salad, it brought a smile to my face <laughs> immediately. Yeah, Greek Salad? Caesar Salad? I'm fine with both. Okay. Olives? Uh, they're okay. Yeah. Not, not a big fan of olives, even though I come from uh, Mediterranean region, so I should be a fan of them. Still no first blood glimpse. Bottom, Raid King. 
should be a bit careful. They got just got level 3, meaning that there's 2 points in Scorched Earth and also 2 points in Fade Bolt. So that's a lot of magical damage coming out from these two heroes. Yeah, fight's happening on both ends of the map. They're continuing to try and go after QI, QX, but haven't quite been able to get that first blood, which is uh, now 4 minutes in, and uh, we're still looking for it. I've seen some games go 9, 10, 11 minutes, no first blood. A lot of trying, though, at the moment. It's important to participate. You don't have to win. You don't have to, you know, get the kills. It's it's about participation. Okay. Yeah, get that trophy. Get that ribbon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> you tried, Ben. Oh, okay. Appreciate that. And Ooh, I top lane. Emo might be in trouble. There's a snowball available. Yeah, they've got the shards in front of him. Now they're going to go to the snowball. They'll pull in Zhao Yu. They'll look for the first blood. One more right click, and they finally take out Emo. So he is the first person to go down in the Chinese DPC. And he's made that change from mid to carry. We'll see if it works out or if it's going to be more of this. And Not a good look. You switch position and you're the first one to die yeah. as a carry. You know, this is going to be remembered. Not in a good way. I don't want to bring up other things that were remembered, a la him quoting himself and saying that he was a god in the mid lane, but... Uh, well. And then dropping down to Division 2 immediately. Yeah, and then to go into carry and... We'll see. We'll see how it goes. I, I, I don't want to... I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers here just yet. A little glimpse back onto the Doom. MKS trying to put out some damage on Irving, but not a lot at the moment goes to the net. They've got the Telekinesis below some throws Big down, snowball. they've got the Snowball and the Shards blocking in Irving. So the right clicks continue to come, and they'll finally get their second kill onto the board as uh, a little bit of a trade from Pelosi using that Fable to get MKS in return. At least that's something. For now, th that Prophet on the top lane, level 4, once she gets another point, and Spirit Siphon gets an extra charge. Like, this lane gets uh, more and more difficult for them to play it, and I like what I see. I think uh, what that Prophet has in a quick buy, Mech does have a Cane Boots already. Uh, Guardian Greaves is a good item. It's a great item right now. I think we're going to definitely see more of it. Xiao Yu. <laughs> Yeah, Zhao Yu in trouble, two seconds stun, and looking like Zhao Yu's dead to rights, especially with the Sinister Gaze. It looked for a moment there was going to be something happening over mid, and they might still go for Tusk, but they have the help of the Rubik and yeah, some vision there showing that uh, they could see the salad. Dragonite, yeah. Hit level six, going to start pressuring the tower. There is a catapult. Uh, pretty all oh, good shards. He blocked them both. Yeah, he doesn't have level six, so Dusk going to be kind of... Locked into this position for a moment. They go to the snowball. They'll move on to Pelosin. Medic field is up. LWW trying to help to get this kill on to Pelosin. They'll finally finish him off. Knight gets himself one. And Dust still looking for that level six. Gets it with that last creep. So let's see what he's able to accomplish. It's still 3v1. Dragon Tail. And Tag Team is going to try and remnant it away. The shards from a distance. Not enough damage. And Dust will be able to throw a remnant. TP back to base. Heal up. Full health, full mana. And then come on back. LWW tried a cute little play with the glimpse. Uh, maybe it's going to work out. They needed a couple of extra hits, but uh, not enough. Still, even though using Dragon Tail on Ember Spirit, who dodged the Dragon Tail, they still managed to get a kill on Rubik. Great charge by Salad. Yeah, he's been uh, pretty solid at the moment. And yes, I like, like I've talked about. Pretty with salad. salad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very. Very solid as Emo is now going to go over for Zhao Yu. They've got the snowball once again. They're going to pull in the Death Prophet. But Telekinesis slamming him down with the Sinister Gaze. So they stack the lockdown. And it's not going to get them any kills. But it will keep alive Emo, who is soaking up a lot of aggression coming out from Emo. Still, in terms of CS, he's doing almost as good as Raid King. But once you leave Raid King Dust alone... In trouble. Glimpse, Remnant, all the way back towards mid. And... Got a remnant once more. They'll throw the dragon tail out, but they just lack the damage to get this kill on dust. And now the supports who are conga lining back over to mid. They, they three been, versus three yeah. on a mid lane. It's been a while since we've seen that happening, but to, to go back to my point, Raid King hits level six. He's saving a point in case they decide to go on him. Doom is available, but not enough mana to work. Does have three mangoes, so he's actually fine. But you can leave Raid King alone, you can leave that Prophet alone, like even Dragonite. So for IG, it's very difficult to rotate and try to get a kill on one of these side lanes because they need to bring an extra hero. So yeah, looking at the, some of the items. 
Net Profit. She is going for the mech build, which I really like. I wanted to say, but uh, the action started happening. Okay, well, it's a great substitute. Like usually during TI time, we saw raid pack, raid pack, but uh, the item got nerfed and the Guardian Greaves got buffed. So I think this is gonna be a great substitution for it. Kind of reading my mind. I wanted to ask you that question: Why you thought Guardian Greaves and Mech they're kind of making a resurgence? Dust TP's up towards top, Remnant over, they've got the Sinister Gaze on a Zhao Yu, the Searing Chains will hit onto both the Tusk as well as the Death Prophet, Zhao Yu in trouble, holds in via the Snowball, survives for a moment longer with a Kinetic Field up blocking in Emo, they've got the Shards pushing away Pelosa for a moment, but they still get the kill on a Salad, they'll chop him up and at least get one. That's something. Meanwhile, mid lane is going to get pressured by a Dragonite, he knows that uh, they already invested like CK ulti, both Lich and Rubik are still level 5, so there's not enough damage to take down this Dragonite. And he's super tanky. 1600 HP, 9 minutes into so. the game. Very difficult to take down. Another Elder Dragon form is going to be available soon, so they're going to start pressuring the tower again. Yeah, we'll see who they bring over, uh, especially with uh, Salad respawning. They're keeping, at the moment, the Disruptor top, but... I'm ready to see uh, if they start to shift over I, the sports and, and just jump. I love it. Disruptor item build. Uh, it's one of the best builds I've seen in a long time. Just straight up raindrop. <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. I mean, it looks pretty impressive. I, I can't give a, a very valid analysis of it, but it looks good. Couple raindrops. That's all you need. He's bringing boot, boots of speed, level four. I think. He's gonna be the one buying the tome because, like, both supports were roaming around and didn't get uh, much done. These were like early kills that got involved, uh, especially because three versus three on a mid lane. Salad. Invis under the nose of Pelosi, and they've got the tokenesis to slam him down out of the tusk, but he gets the shards out, so Pelosi gonna drop to MKS. Midas then, at the same time, picked up for Irving. Typical Doom build. Yeah. The Midas, have the Devour, money, money, money. Pretty much. There's a new hybrid build on Doom where you go for Octarine Core, uh, level 20 talent, uh, minus 35 seconds on Doom cooldown. It takes time to build up, but once you get to that point, it's, uh, <laughs> it's almost impossible to play against. Why, why choose a target when you're just going to have it up in a moment anyway, right? Especially if you whoever. get like neutral item that uh, Quick gives HR. you CDR. So exorcism used up top. QIQX he'll TP away. Go down towards bottom. So they're conceding this tower. And it's an easy, uncontested tier one for Ehome. Not like a massive lead or anything in the moment. Only up about a thousand gold, but of course offset by what Doom brings to the table in a Midas and a Devour. So maybe feeling like a, a little bit more of an advantage for Ehome at the moment. But net worths are pretty close overall. Wraith Fire Blast thrown over onto Irving. They've got the glimpse back into the Static Storm. They just don't Great have the damage out. on the TP. They already used the glimpse. They already used the Sun from a Wraith King. They needed another one. But yeah, very nice read there from Doom. Irving understanding that uh, he's going to be able to TP out because he saw Salad as well on a mid lane trying to farm his level 6. Disruptor did take the tome, so Salad needs to get his experience somewhere. Dust will be picking up the bounty rune. Sorry, not bounty rune. The arcane rune this time around. Filling up that bottle. Three more sips. Trying to put some damage over bottom. And they do eventually get that tower. That Prophet going straight into Greaves. That's going to be a lot of sustain. So this... I'm not sure if they have enough burst. Maybe with the CK and the lockdown from Rubik, a good Chain Frost. But if there's a Snowball, this Dead Prophet, she's not going to die. And to go back one more time to Guardian Greaves, why it's so popular, the cost is reduced by 100. And also the threshold for boosted health is up by 5%. So that's really, really nice upgrade. Yeah, so you're getting more bang for your buck. Pretty much. Always feels nice to get a little bit more from these items, especially now Guardian Greaves coming into the mix again. I like it way more than Wraith Pact. Feels a lot better for me as a support. Helping the team do things, I guess. Link Dragon Tail coming through. They've got the Static Storm and the Snowball out on the Ember Spirit. 
When the Warriors punch with the newly acquired six for Salad, they'll take out Dust over mid. And Ehome continuing to roll their way through is they're taking out all the tier ones and they're invading IG's side of the map, making it look uh, pretty easy, their movements in the moment. They're really not being contested on anything no. they do. IG is in a spot where they don't feel like they want to fight. And this is something the panel did mention, is having Rubik plus Lich. You also have a Doom who He's not going for a blank dagger. He's going for a BKB as a first item to be a bit more defensive. So that means, like, you don't have a real playmaker in this game. Like, you don't have a Tusk. You don't have this uh, Disruptor. You don't have Blink Dragonite stun. So the execution of a gank for IG is not going to be as easy as it's going to be for the E-Home. Do you think IG is just strictly team fight and waiting for just the right timing? Their team fight is not as strong as E-Home. So, like, what are, what exactly can they do in this situation? Like, they're, e Ehome's just walking all over them, right? Like, their movements on the map are very fluid. They're not getting stopped anywhere. IG just want to farm at the moment and not really take these engagements. And they're kind of not giving up a lot of kills. Like, only 5 in 13 minutes. It's not like they're getting uh, jumped every moment. But as you said, a lot of this gold is coming out from Doom having devour extra gold having that hand of Midas mm -hmm. but they're still not ready to take a fight every single time there's gonna be a static storm available they're gonna try to go and kill one of the cores most likely that's gonna be Ember Spirit they want to slow him down because he is the playmaker pretty much for IG and so far he's sitting uh, below that profit in the net worth yeah for IG right now it's a pretty baseline test I mean baseline test for both of them but Really, if you're an IG fan and you're trying to look at what Emo's going to bring to the table as a carry, this is a big question mark for you, and you're trying to see what's going to go down as Irving bottom throws the Doom out onto the Tusk, oh! but they've got the glimpse from a distance. <laughs> LWW's there, and they will get the kill into Irving. A wasted Doom. I was thinking about it. Like, is he going to actually Doom him to try to TP out? And uh, he does it, but Disruptor was already there, ready with the glimpse. So yeah, for the next two minutes, you're not going to have Doom. It's not like we've seen Doom being used at all. Right. Now that one time. Now. Didn't even, uh, didn't really do anything. The Tusk didn't feel it. LWW is there. And, uh, a, and speaking of LWW, you know, this, it, it's, there's a, a lot of new landscape here, right? A lot of new players, a lot of guys, maybe not a lot of people have heard of. You know, this is a guy who spent a lot of time in the entire Aster organization, played for Aster Aquarius, which is now defunct. Played for Team Sirius, which is now defunct, but uh, both under the Aster umbrella and uh, played for Aster Ares as well. And now he's coming into E-Home, which was almost United Gaming for like five seconds. I don't really know what was going on there, but uh, you know, they're back to E-Home again. And, uh, oh, dust again. It's a big moment. So we'll see what LW is going to be able to do. The silence comes out from Zhao Yu. They've got the glimpse back into the static storm. They'll go to the exorcism and get the kill on a dust. He really has no way of defending himself once he's under that static storm and it just is impossible to survive there and with the exorcism being used right by the tier 2 tower what's next none other than said tier 2 tower they're going to try and go for it Pelosi's nearby but salad already knows something's cooking yeah. ooh barely misses expecting the rotation and most of the visions there they've got the glimpse right into the snowball they've got the kinetic field up walrus punch and a right click from salad to knock him out and Pelosi dead again it is e home Pushing through and looking like the stronger team for sure at the moment at uh, 60 minutes into the game. IG seems to be out of ideas how to come back. And as you said, that Prophet using ulti, it's only level 1 ulti, but still more than enough damage. Guardian Greaves is online. Roshan going to be next on the menu for E-Home. You have a tag team, two points in it uh, with the next EXO. You can, like... You don't even need an EXO once Raid King finishes his death, so that's going to be even more tower damage, more Roche taking potential. But yeah, Emo, he's farming up. He's uh, up there, top four. They're, all, they're pretty close. Yeah, they're, all of them are pretty close. I think Dust needs to start thinking about getting a BKB instead of having a Maelstrom, because right now his game is kind of ruined. Yeah, he's got, he's got the BKB, but... It's after, you know, he's got a cute after. I'll get my uh, important item of Maelstrom and then I'll, All right. BKB. I'll call it. If he dies one more time, this is a straight BKB. It's Javelin into BKB. Okay, so you, if you, okay. Is there a stenographer on set? Just, we'll have that, you know, marked up if it happens and it doesn't. He, we'll just, he just bought, let's see if he locks it. 
for now it is unlocked. The Mithril Hammer's coming out. Drum roll in chat. It's on the courier. Oh, I like that. That was really well done. Maelstrom. Maelstrom it is. All right. Well, you, you said he had to die one more time. So technically, you're not wrong. Semantics, but I'll give it to you. All right. Better so than my prediction. Sometimes made. you need to take a risk. Yeah. Maybe you're going to be able to kill this Disruptor because this is the tool that you're afraid of most. The Static Storm, it's very easy to execute with the Glimpse. Next Exorcism going to be up. It's still level 1 Exo. You want to have this at level 2 because number of Spirits does double. Ooh, Raid King, he pulled this so done. And also he found a really good neutral item. Brigand's Blade coming up to him. You a big fan of the... Uh Brigand, Brigand's Blade or Brigand's Blade? I always thought Brigand was like a name. Brigand the Great. Never heard anyone pronounce it that way, but uh, you know I am uh, maybe yeah, the, a little fan of a lore. Is nah, there... it's the Kekona in me. I got a, I got that little bit of a northeast. New it's York a great twang. item. It's one of the best. Items. Maybe I'm a slightly biased because I'm a Pango player, and it's the best item you can find on Pango. Yeah. I was told that today, actually. Double damage here on Knight. Sally going to take over the outpost. Available thus because they took the tier two up top earlier with that exorcism. And this exorcism is going to be used to go Throsh. Get that first Aegis of the entire season. As here comes IG smoked up and looking to fight. But are they going to get into the pit in time? They're going to try and make their move over. It's getting a little bit low. They're going to have to make a move soon. Salad is going to take their attention and give them the Aegis. So MKS is going to get that. He goes into the Snowball. And they're going to have the Static Storm down. Salad's going to a couple of these heroes. They get the Kona Dust. They'll take a Pelosi. Two of these heroes already gone with the Chain Frost bouncing around. They at least get Salad, but it doesn't bounce again. And QIQX now on the run. So a two for one looking like a three for one if they can get up to this Lich. But he's able to squirm his way through the trees and just escape the grasp of Ehom. Being able to only kill Salad there, I think uh, IG wanted to have more. And you also have Raid King with Aegis. Uh, Reincarnation was not even popped uh, one time during this game. Doom used again and only managing to kill Tusk in this one. Like this Guardian Greaves pickup is way too good. Look at the regeneration on this Dragonite. He's sitting at 25.5 per second. You called him unkillable like three minutes into the game. He hasn't died since. Emo coming over. Good damage. He'll get the kill on LWW, but now they're going to look over as the Telekinesis comes down. They get the first life out of the hands of the Wraith King. They'll look over as the Snowball comes in. It's on to Irving. Irving trying to run. Emo's already taken out. The shards are blocking Irving right in place. So Knight gets the kill on Irving. The Blink, the Dragon Tail. Another one down as QIQX. He'll fall. Three, make it a fourth. Pelosin drops to the sword of the Wraith King. This is one of those games where it looks pretty even, but from the start, like we were saying that this game uh, looks in favor of the E-Home and IG, they just can't strike back. I remember during the last uh, DPC season how IG was calling out the games uh, relatively early on, and I would not be surprised if they just try one more fight and just call it, because they feel like they don't have what it takes to fight back. Yeah, that that's it. To, to say it, you know, that is a very caca move, a very calculated you know, as the tentacles are pushing you up in yeah, the air on a rabbit. Yeah, very calculated Yeah. It just, it just takes them out. And then you just call GG. You know the game's over. You got to get out of this one. And, hey, you know, maybe this is the moment here as we're taking a look at the replay. Snowball comes in, blocks into Irving. Then the shards are perfect from Salad. And Emo Irving dropping. You know, that's really the first fight that Emo's kind of participated in, too. So it's kind of... We showed, yeah, we've to, seen the potential yeah. for like three seconds, what CK can do. He managed to blow up Disruptor, but uh, once enough. they found the real it's one, cool. like those illusions, they're supposed to soak up damage from the exorcism. It just doesn't happen. Like maybe create a little confusion, be able to get an, an extra round of the spells, uh, get that reality rift, get another stun. But they understand that these cores, they're not dying. So they need to kill Disruptor, they need to kill Tusk, and then maybe with the buyback, try to play it. But still, having that Aegis for two and a half, two minutes, means that, time. yeah, it means that they're gonna go and uh, siege the high ground. Because there's a bunch of tower damage, Exorcism is online one more time. 
you, you, you break it down so well. I, I would give my math 2K analysis, but, uh, you know, it, it's probably uh, the same. I would have said the same thing, of course. So they go to the high ground, they look for Polos, and they're trying to get the kill with the BKBB popped here by Knight as well as Irving. Exorcism still going on, and they've got a 6k lead. They're going to blink in and go to the Wraith Fire Blast. Sinister Gaze, the locks up Bank KS for a second, but they get the kill into dust. They'll take out this Ember, and only the first life out of the hands of the Wraith King. They move forward, a stun on a Salad. They've got the Static Storm down as well as the Kinetic Field. They're locking in Emo. As the buyback comes out from Salad, the damage in. They'll finally take the Aegis out of the hands of the Wraith King, but he's going to be alive once again. So can they lock down this Wraith King? No, he immediately blinks away. No harm, no foul. Just an Aegis gone. That's a Doom used on Dragonite. He didn't even feel it. Uh, buyback from Salad, as you mentioned. But the, the big thing is Ember Spirit bought back. Like, his item progression is non-existent. He's uh, almost as farmed as position for Rubik. So not having a game this time around. It's only chip damage against all those tanky cores off E-Home. So very, very difficult to drag. Like, they, they have enough lockdown pre BKB on Ember, so every single time he decides to go in, he steps up a bit too close, he's gonna die. And they're looking to play aggressive again. They've got this double damage, they smoke up. They know IG kinda have to leave the base, they can't just sit there, they're gonna blink in with the Walrus Punch, they go to the Snowball, it's all the way across over to the Lich, they get the kill on the Pulos in, they'll take out the Rubik, they'll look over for a second, QIQX will fall, and MKS with a double kill. So, again, Ehom, they're not afraid, and. Truthfully, they shouldn't be, and it's it's nice to see a team, especially with, I would say, kind of minimal Tier 1 experience in, in an yeah. opening match like this, not being afraid. We've seen that in the past with your Magmas, your LBZS, um, insert Tier 2 China team name here. They get a little bit scared. I think one of the opening matches in 2020 when we were covering China together was Vici against LBZS. And LBZS had a 40k net worth lead and we're afraid to yeah, finish it's, Yeah, I, I remember that game. It's always like how you're going to close it out. Uh, you tend to make more mistakes later on because it, it gets into your head. You don't have the experience how to close it out. Glimpse forcing a BKB. <laughs> like we've seen so many defensive dooms, defensive BKBs to try to TP out so you don't have it for the fight. And this is exactly a moment where Ehome would be very willing to fight, right? No BKB on the doom. They have the lockdown. They've been able to take the team fights over to IG. They really have plenty of options, right? Like, I don't think taking their time to get one more item for these heroes or kind of get what they feel comfortable with is really giving IG all that much room, right? Because IG don't exactly have much of the map to farm with. Now they show up on one of the side lanes. They're too afraid. There's uh, three blink initiators. There is uh, also a glimpse available. So you show up. If you don't have a BKB, you're most likely dead. Like even position five disruptor is going for Aghanim Scepter. So he's going to be like their late game insurance if something goes wrong, which I I don't think this game can go wrong for E-Home anymore. Being built for that disruptor. Love it. Radiant Smoke, awesome. five man from IG. They're going to be on the high ground over here. They know. They just yeah, placed a ward. They placed a ward. They've got the sentry and the obs nearby. They should kind of give it away for IG that E home know, but not afraid to even just stand there and de ward it. I was almost expecting E home to make the jump. They're a little bit too far away. There's just not many opportunities right now, and the net worth lead continues to grow for Ehome. That bottom and mid set of racks both gone, and it just comes down to whether or not Ehome want to wait for that next Roche and, and take it a little bit carefully trying to finish up this game. It's a safer choice to wait for Roche. Like, you can try to go for the pickoff, because MKS, he did pick up the Invis rune and Salad. He's already there. It's being pinged out. If someone shows, they're going to go immediately. Yeah. Yeah, they've got the Blink, Walrus Punch, snow, uh, Snowball combo, so the, the lockdown with that, especially a Blink follow-up from the Wraith King, he's also got that Wraith Fire Blast ready in the holster, so you, the, just the lockdown is there. You can kind of kill anybody they want at the moment. Uh, obviously, Sans BKB, or even with it, it feels like, for the most part, they could kill anybody. Also, all this minus armor coming out from Deso plus AC. Amplifying damage of the Dead Prophet ulti, Dragonite, right clicks, like even Tusk with the punch 
They can one-shot people with it if they get close. That's right. Hook. Ags picked up for the DK. BKB, I believe, was there for the Ember, right? He picked it up, yeah. Well, Finally. 27 minutes. Maelstrom, BKB. Okay. I'm not going to say whether or not that's a good time because I have no idea. I never <laughs> No, no, maybe. I felt the sarcastic. Okay, no, no, you have 27 whoa. minutes. I, I, have, I have no idea. I, I don't know. Tough game for him. Yeah, it's a tough game. Exorcism used on this Roche. Aegis and Shard ready to go on Roche. And about to be dropped into the hands of E-Home. So, just taking the Shard. Probably just Wraith King, right? Yeah. Because that Prophet already bought the Shard for herself. Uh, Dragonite did pick up one for himself, so. Another so smoke for IG. Sports. They need to win this one. This is GG. If they lose this fight, the game's over. They get Crypt Swarm. Okay. Nothing doing with this smoke at the moment. They kind of gave it away with that steal. But now they'll make the jump. They've got the BKB be popped here by Emo going after the Death Prophet. The Static Storm is going to be laid down. BKB's been popped by Emo. They get the kill on a Zhao Yu. So they take out the Death Prophet. They'll move forward. They've got themselves the Doom. Chain Frost bouncing around as well as a Kinetic Field laid down once again. They get the kill on a Knight. They'll take out two. And IG with what seems to be the first victory in a fight in this game for them is pretty significant. Yeah, they did manage to blow up Dead Prophet immediately and also getting a Doom on Dragonite this time around before he gets the BKB off and then the Chain Frost near the big camp uh, did allow them to have enough damage to actually bring him down. These are the fights that they needed, like, I'd say five, ten minutes ago. So, let's see, we'll take another look at this one and boom, BKB, three seconds stun. What are you doing here, Zhao? You getting blown up, that's what. And uh, Kinetic Field, Static Storm, not enough to lock him in, especially with the BKB, and then they go right in on a Knight. Another three seconds stun from Emo, Telekinesis, everything needed to get those two kills. And you see the net worth went from 9k to 5k. That's a big little it's a big chunk. chunk of gold, yeah. Big little chunk, I don't know if I'm trying to <laughs> agree with myself or disagree with myself. It's internal fighting, um, something that has plagued plenty of teams just like Elephant. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what they do. Smoke from E-Home. They have Aegis one more time on Raid King. Maybe this time around they could have gave this Aegis to someone else, like either Dragonite <laughs> or a Dead Prophet. I don't know if Raid King really needs it, right? But he'll take it. They want to have this Ember Spirit. If he uses Remnant, he's ready to be punched. Observer Ward placed. Gonna give them vision. They're looking. They're really looking. Exorcism now popped again, and they're going to go for the Mega Creeps. Top tier three, top set of racks in some trouble. Set up his Searing Chains as well as a stun. Four seconds on a Sal, but he gets down to the ground. What a chat move. He was waiting for it just so that he uses a stun and then forces himself down. No more Frost Shield on tower. Raising's going to go in and get those right clicks. So Remnant forward, they've got the Telkinesis, and they blow up Zhao Yu again. The Chain Frost going all the way over to Salad. They'll get themselves a second, they'll look over the Wraith King. Maybe he did need this Aegis. Blink Dragon Tail, this Lich is in some trouble. QIQX falls and buys back immediately with a Wicked Sick coming out on the MKS. They'll bring in with a Reality Rip this DK. Static Storm placed down by LWW. They're doing a lot of damage on the Emo. And the right clicks from MKS with the BKB gets the kill onto the CK, who's got buyback and a glimpse onto Irving. He'll die too. So Knight with another one. MKS has a double kill, the Slight of Fist, and the Searing Chains onto MKS. Just don't feel like they're doing anything to stop this Wraith King. They got one life out of his hands, but it's just not enough. He's still holding on to that Aegis. Another ult is going to be available in 20 seconds for Wraith King, so he's going to be sieging. We'll go back to full HP. They're even using healing cells on him. But yeah, that Prophet, she might start thinking about getting the E on this, because the uh, last two fights, uh, they did manage to blow her up and need some kind of a defensive item. Snowball, not there on time. CK with the Reality Rift, repositioning him. And yeah, Eco, they know that they already used everything. Doom is still available, and another CK ulti, but yeah, last set of barracks for them. 
taking it out with ease. No contest yet. They have Doom back up. He's gonna TP in, he's gonna look for the Doom. They've got Pelosi going forward. But there's the Walrus Punch, it's out of the Doom with the Snowball. I think both these heroes, they get the kill to Pelosi, and they'll take out one, and they'll look towards the rest. But with South with staff. the Force Staff out of the low ground, they get the kill on LWW, taking out the Disruption, who does have buyback emo, though, without a BKB. And now finally popping it, getting it back up, and falling immediately. So it really doesn't do anything for him. As he pops it, he dies, he goes down, the GG is called, and Ehome will take game number one. I gotta say, very impressed by the Ehome performance. Yeah. Uh, didn't have too much expectations coming into these DPC. We just started, you know, but it's a brand new team that looks extremely well, like uh, in terms of uh, team fight execution, how yeah. they move around the map, understanding uh, like... The